second. Very loud and clear. So we can let the button in, right? Mm. Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, good afternoon. Uh, this is Alan and my colleague here, Shalene. Hello. Uh, hi, thanks for joining in uh, another session. Career, se career, career workshop session with us today. And today's uh, the topic is Ace Your inter Job Interview and Tackle Common Interview Questions. All right, uh, so we are going to start now and... Yeah, we'll and slowly start because some of our friends are probably are landing <laughs> into the room with us. So, um, so just uh, get comfortable and uh, we will start, yeah, slowly. Yes. Over to you, Alan. Okay, good. Thank you, Shalin. Uh, all right, so uh, let's talk a little, let's share a little bit on uh, IBF Careers Connect uh, it, while waiting for our friends to come in slowly, some of them to come in slowly. So let me share a little bit. Some of you may have uh, known uh, IBF Careers Connect and you have seen our career advisor. Good. Uh, for those who don't know, uh, I think this is a time that we can share a little bit information so that you know what, what we are all about. And uh, for IBF Career Connects, we are a career center uh, for the financial services sector. And if you're looking for to find out uh, skills and competencies in the financial services sectors, what are the roles in the this area, uh, feel free to come and find us and uh, we can talk about the skills framework for financial services. And of course, uh, if you're looking for what are the market trends, uh, labor market informations, and no, we can we have resources to to help you to navigate through and for us we also curate uh, networking sessions uh, and workshops like this and also uh, master classes and uh, some of the session we work with uh, IBA fellows to give you some practical insights so these are where we connect you with our professionals right last but not least uh, if you are thinking to do a career planning or enhance your employability in terms of job matching uh, you can always uh, write in to us and see a career advisor. We are here to help you to navigate through your journey in the financial services sectors. All right. Okay, Shirlene. Yeah. All right. So uh, today's topic is about interviewing questions, right? Mm -hmm. So I think there are so many interviewing questions in the place. I think today we have picked up about uh, two questions. Mm-hmm. Two common questions. I think these two common questions are, I mean, there are many questions, but we think that these two common questions are very uh, important and mostly asked. Uh, so, uh, well, let's discuss this first question. All right. The first question will be, tell me about yourself. I think it's quite a common question, right, Shalin? Yes, yes, it uh, is. Uh, okay. For first interview, I think uh, a lot of our candidates are, Sometimes, uh, you know, they have lost touch and they, they do take some time to to, to craft this uh, introduction, yeah. Yes, that's right. Mm -hmm. And, uh, all right, before I, I even start to talk about it, I talk a bit of logistic. Mm -hmm. I think uh, if you have any questions, please key in the Q&A box uh, so that we can review your questions and surely we'll pick up some questions and my my career, career advisor colleagues will also answer some of the questions. So click on the Q&A box, put in the questions and... Right. So Absolutely. yes, yeah. Yes. So maybe I uh, just want to add on here that uh, no, no question is a silly question. Today we're gonna be learning together. Uh, and because this is a one and a half hour session, uh, we'll try our best to squeeze as much as out of this one and a half hour to share what we um, you know, what we have observed, what we have coached, and how uh some of the little tips that we're gonna share later. So do make sure you kind of take note a bit, you know, because um. There are some of these questions uh, and some pointers that Alan has very, very thoughtfully prepared for you uh, that might be helpful for you and some personal reflection perhaps after this uh, session might be um, something that you can work on. Yeah. And uh, yeah, just feel free to ask us questions because I think uh, Alan has actually planned out in a way for today's session to allow you to, uh, with some room to ask us questions towards the last um, segment, we will definitely leave some space, some time uh, for you to ask us questions. So. Maybe the examples may not be directly uh, from your field of work, you know, uh, because we do not know all of you, uh, you know, basically uh, which which uh, area of specialization you come from. But uh, definitely happy to, yeah, 
you know, yeah, I think that someone already posed a very good question already. Yeah, we're going to talk about that later. Yeah. Okay. Yes. And uh, please do uh, post your questions and uh, we will definitely um, answer them. So yeah, over to you, Alan. Uh, yes. What, about, what uh, is this question about? Tell me about yourself. Yes, yes. Why don't we do a why don't we do a role play, Shalin? I mean, huh? to help oh, our okay. audience know better <laughs> what we are doing, right? And yeah. what we are what we want to try to 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 share, right? Let's let's do okay. a role play. Are you okay? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. good. Okay, so, guys, just... uh, I, I'm I'm just gonna put myself out here, okay? So don't laugh at me. Uh, no, uh no, and, no. and 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 let's let let uh hear me out, okay? How I'm gonna introduce myself, okay? So so I'll say hi, Alan. Okay, assuming Alan is my. Hey. Oh yeah, so I'm the interviewer. You yeah, are yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, okay. Yes, okay. All right, so, so okay. um, you... hi, my name is Shalene. Uh, um, my current role as a uh, is is at the IBF as a career advisor. So I help professionals uh navigate the the dynamic and, and changing, you know, uh, my banking and finance landscape and uh, help them to, you know, uh, clarify some of their thoughts around their career. Uh, help. Hopefully, we help them to grow and become the future leaders of the industry. And uh, in my earlier career, prior to to at IBF, um, I was uh, I've always been involved with uh, learning and development work. Uh, starting off where uh, I was very much uh, involved with uh, talent development uh, work uh, at uh, workforce development agency. So through that that uh, through that time, uh, I actually gained a really deep understanding working mm -hmm. with multiple uh, industry key stakeholders. Uh, mainly uh, looking at how, you know, to chart uh, frameworks and as well as uh, developing customized program to help the firms, uh, you know, develop their talent pool. So then, uh, and looking ahead, I hope that uh, my career, my goal is really to make a more meaningful impact uh, within the banking and finance space. Uh, and I'm really eager to uh, help this uh, very uh, changing uh, landscape and the workforce to be more resilient. Uh, and also to be able to embrace whatever new opportunities that come. Yeah. Thank you, Shalene. So you guys have probably noticed <laughs> how Shalene... Yeah, good, good, wonderful. I think you did a uh, very good introductions. Mm -hmm. So maybe I'm going to take Shalene, what she has shared, and then let's look into what, uh, how we can learn from this. Uh, uh, tell me about myself. Okay. Right? So, so what you have here from Shalene is probably a structure. So let me share a, a little bit of structure, how Shalene started. She started with uh, telling about her current role, All right? So it's important to identify yourself, you know, where you are doing, where you're working and, you know, and also understanding to share a little bit of our career highlights, you know, what do you do in that particular job itself, right? And then you notice also that Shirlene went into to share a little bit about her past experience. Very quickly, she shared about her experience as a professional development specialist, all right, and uh, she talked about you know that role that she gained, uh, uh, how she was being shaped after you know serving that role. Uh, she gained a deeper understanding in the uh, skills for the industries and also expertise in different uh, learning platform itself. And then very quickly, she went into another role that she shared about. She being, uh, she was a career advisor. All right, and she shared about you know how that experience as a career advisor helped her to believe that you know there's a transformation work that she's doing that that she believed that it requires networking and also mentorships for the uh for the uh, job seeker itself that she she she, she have coach. All right, so you could see Shirley started with a presence uh a uh, job role. She dealt into her past experience and how it shaped her, and finally. If you realize what Shirley had shared is she conclude with her, exp her aspirations in terms of how she would see her job as a meaningful job and how she can contribute to that role, uh, you know, looking forward to the role that uh, she wanted to be, all right, that would be, uh, she hoped to foster a skilled and resilient workforce in the financial services sector itself. So, yeah, so yeah, Shirley, go ahead. Oh no! I think this, this is great. No, yeah, I think mm. uh, it's important. Uh, regardless of where you, where your, what your background is, uh, yes. it is really important to, um, take take uh, put in some markers in your own uh, self. Tell me about self introduction, so that you don't go off tangent. Because mm. I think um later on, I think uh we will share a bit more in terms of um what you could be looking out for. Because uh then because during interview right um. 
uh, it's really about how how you are able to stay calm and 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 stay anchored on what are the key markers that you have in mind that you you want when you want to address a question like that. So okay. um uh you know I think for fresh graduate I uh, it's really important. I think I understand some of you guys are fresh graduate. So it could be about yeah, how long to talk, right? Yeah, good question. Okay, I, I will talk about the fresh grad part first. So I think fresh grad uh, um, is important not to discount yourself because you have no working experience. experience. Mm. Right, not Ellen. I That's think right. there's definitely some really um valuable experience that you had, uh, you have uh, acquired and accumulated during your uni days, right? So mm. then you could use some of these uh, meaningful experience that you have um, to talk about your, you know, about yourself. Yeah. Yep. Mm. Yeah. Ella, and I'll uh, answer the question about how long to talk. Yeah, time. yeah. So, so, so maybe I add on to what Shalene shared before I answer the the questions. Uh, normally, for fresh grads, right? Some of you or most of you probably have taken internship, and internship could be also part of the experience that you can also share. All right. So, uh, coming back to uh the uh questions about how long do you need to talk about it? I think if you mm. really realize that you do not need to tell a lot of details in this section because you know that from introducing yourself, there could be a multiple question and they may be keen to ask you further and probe you further into other questions. So just give a, a brief introduction about yourself. I think it's good enough. Understanding, that's why I share with you the structure first. Begin with the current position that where you are. Dive in a little bit into your one or two last experience, relevant experience, and then conclude how would you see yourself in this role and your aspiration is aligned with it. Yeah, all right. So right. I know there's a, a, a couple of questions coming in. Uh, uh, yeah. I uh, think okay. these are the questions we're going to we're gonna answer you later because uh, yeah. some of the questions are very relevant to what we're going to share later. So yeah. I'll keep it to the last we'll part. Hold, hold our horses a little bit. Yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah. But I okay. think uh, uh, just for everybody's uh, understanding, um, this webinar actually, um, because our career services centers are, are largely targeting our support for mid-career. Uh, uh, I know I mentioned about fresh grad because I think I saw one question from one fresh grad. Uh, they don't really form the majority part of our webinar or our services, but yes. randomly they do come and join us. So truly yeah. welcome them. I mean, as in, you know, just, you know, also um, allow them to also, yeah, you know, benefit okay. from some of this yeah. learning that we're going to have here. Yeah. Thank yeah. You. So this, this workshop is not only just for fresh grad, it's for everyone, yeah. uh, but we will share uh, as a typical uh, the way how we could answer. And of course, we will also help our fresh grad friends by answering some of the questions. Yeah. I think we all, all learn right, together and uh, make full use of this one and a half hour, okay? Thank okay, you. okay. Let's continue. So, after you have put your structure in and how you introduce yourself, I think the next important thing about tell me about yourself would be, you know, how would you uh, demonstrate your skills and your experience? All right. Questions like, you know, uh, can you tell me about, you no, know, Shirley, maybe come back to Shirley again. Can you tell me more about your work in, your coaching work in IVF? Oh, okay. Um, mm. Well, I provide personalized career coaching and uh, uh, and, and labor market uh, insights to help them to identify their interest, you know, assess uh, their skills, confidence, because what you think you know and what they actually do is different, right? And uh, understand uh, their work values around it, because sometimes, um what we think we our values are, uh, it might be, mean a different thing, right? Mm. When they're actually at the work, and I also um uh also assist uh financial institutions, you know, who are undergoing changes through career transition support, yeah, to help uh impacted uh, employees to better navigate the next chapter in their career. Mm. So this is something that uh you know usually will take um. Quite quite a lot of uh, conversations to to help find some orientation around. So this is also another key area that I work I work on. Yeah. Okay. Good. Thank you, Shirlene. Let's look into what Shirlene had shared earlier on when with a question was asked. You know what what is your coaching work in IBF, and then specifically, uh, she actually shared this thing that she talked about. She provide a uh, personal coaching, a uh, career coaching. And she also provides labor market information. So what's what she's doing? She's taking all the relevant skills and experience and put across to the interviewer. All right. And she not just talk about <clears throat> listing that skills. She's not just saying that, you know, I am uh I have I have coaching skills 
or I I I I I I I I have training skills, or I'm good in this, I'm good in that. But she explain how she used the skills to help that uh her clients or candidates itself. So you can see from that script itself, she said she used her personal coaching, personalized coaching skills and labor inform labor market information to help them identify career interests, assess their skill confidence and understand their work values. Right. Mm -hmm. So you see, she demonstrates what how her skill can help them in different areas. And also she came in to uh to share also that you know uh she also worked with financial institution. She shared that who she worked with uh by providing that career transition uh transition assistance to their impacted employees. So these are skill sets, but she not only just lists the skill sets, but she demonstrates who where and how she do it, right? So this is how she demonstrate relevant skills and experience. All right. Okay. So I think there is a question to ask uh, earlier on. I think there's, maybe I pick up one question. There's a question is that I'm doing a career switch and there's no experience in banking and finance. You know, how do I answer that questions? I think, uh, I think when you're doing a career switch, right? I think important thing is to, you need to identify your transferable skills. All right, and if you're looking for a role, then that role must have uh, something that you can add value, something that you can put on the table, some transferable skills that you can uh, share and also uh, relate the examples. And it may not be similar, but really as a give the give someone the idea that you have the ability to function there. All right, so that's something that I can share with you. All right. Okay. The next question, maybe I ask Shalin. All right. I understand earlier on you shared about your learning and development experience, right? How do you help your employee in that organization to learn better? Mm, well, I mean, prior to uh, IBF, uh, remember I mentioned about um, I was with Workforce Development Agency. So I was very much involved with a lot of uh, talent development program, working really on a more um, one to one kind of to firm approach as well, other than at the overarching industry level. So, so um, we really look at what uh, what is the pocket of growth that they're trying to drive and and customizing it while addressing the over overall mandate that we 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 are looking at to achieve to uplift the um the workforce for the industry that I was involved with. So 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 we work with some of the industry lead, uh, leading firms um to achieve that and uh, usually. Uh, it was a. It's a very encouraging. Uh, firms are very participative and and uh, supportive. So um, we had I think overall pretty good um learning score. Usually it's averaging about ninety five percent. Okay, good. Yeah. Well done. All right. Mm -hmm. So uh, notice what Shirlin used numbers and data. She used ninety five percent score. All right. So in an interview, I think it's always good to quantify your achievement and your success. If there are certain numbers that you need to mention, I think it's good to give that a uh, uh, favor of your uh, capability, your success, and also your uh, the project that you met, do you handle, and how would you do that uh, to lead to that score itself. So Shirlene has shared, you know, uh, she designed and implement e-training program, and then from there, uh, she, uh, it helps that uh, her company participant to uh, score as. Uh, learning score exceeding as 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 95%. So use data and numbers in that tell me about yourself is also very important. All right. Okay, next question, Chalene. So, well, uh, hey, are on. you ready? Are you ready? Okay. All right, okay. okay. So I'm the interviewer, you're the interviewee. So next question is, uh, I know you mentioned a bit about, you mentioned, uh, you mentioned in one of the career that you believe in the power of networking and mm. you know uh networking and uh and and also mentorship for mid careers right mm. can, can can you share a little bit more about it right sure um i actually work um through my careers i've actually um observed through the many collaborations i had when we first piloted the concept about networking uh being singaporean i think by and large we're quite shy and mm. and, and it does take time uh for the behavior, the, the skills to set in. I mean, while we know in our mind that uh, networking is important. So I work with industry practitioner to work to 
design like small networking sessions and all that to help them with their transition. And um and what was interesting, I think uh, over at IBF, what we what we were being we were involved with was um the Singapore FinTech Festival in 2022, where there was actually a networking segment and and uh, it was a very um it was a, a very lively and interactive environment. It's, it's just, there's so much improvement in terms of uh, people being comfortable with uh, networking. So, so yeah. this is definitely a, a very valuable uh, skill sets to have, and also a skills that that need to be continuous, continuously uh, honed to to be much more at ease and comfortable with it. Yeah. Okay. Good. Thank you very much, Shalin. I think that was a quite a good description about what you do, and if I'm going to summarize it. Uh, I understand that you collaborate with job partners uh, to organize career networking session and you help them to seize opportunity in their career transitions. So you mentioned a real life example that you provide that uh, events and that is one of the events that you mentioned is uh, the Singapore FinTech Festival in 2022, right? So this is uh, another important fact that important points that you may want to take note that if you have a chance, an opportunity that you have, you may want to uh, bring out a real life example and share with the interviewer that, you know, uh, give them a, give them an understanding that you did involve in certain thing and, and how, how it looks like, you know, it paint a picture so that they can see that clearly that, you know, how you, how do you work through that process and help them to see in an area of, you know, how would you lead that process into a success? Mm. Right? Yeah, if, if I can add on, I think mm. uh, the real life example, meaning that you really go through it and mm. you have been um, a, a key, con uh, you know, a, a contributor or at least a key con uh, contributor or key contributor of it so that the interviewer can see the, their authenticity and that genuinity that, you mm. know, you really know what it is. Like, for example, I have... Um, uh, I always cite this example. I don't know if some of you maybe heard it from me before, but just bear with me. I do have a a um a, a, a pretty high caliber EA candidate before, and uh, through her career, she did quite well. That she transited to risk, uh, operations because her boss saw that that the potential in her, mm. but then she just wanted to be an EA. And eventually, when I successfully placed her in, with a reputable firm, um, she was being like you know her profile. The the hiring manager was after the video interview was running down the corridor and said, I've got this really good candidate. So mm. I think uh, what helped her to stand out was really because she was uh, very much involved, uh, you know, with race operations other, other than just being, uh, you know, a, a EA before and, and after she wants to go back to EA because that's her passion. So when you're able to cite real life examples, um, you, you know, it's really, um, uh, you know, a, a very strong evidence of, you being uh, very confident, being able to handle uh, whatever situations that may come up during operations. Yeah. 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 And also, uh, may I add also that real life example also shows that you could add a couple of uh, challenges that you have faced and then it helps to show uh, how you handle and how you solve the problem itself. That could be another area of your merits in terms of uh, your job interview. Mm. All right. Okay, I think that I, I'm going to answer another question. I think this question was addressed to the number and data. You know, how do you answer if the interviewer asks you, sorry, ask how do you measure using what metrics and come up with the number 95% in this case? All right. Uh, well, I mean, for this workshop, uh, we, we, we just, uh, I mean, if you are the expert in that area, I think you can share a little bit of uh, a couple of models a couple of KPIs, how you measure it, I think you can relate with that, okay? So, for example, if you are a salesperson, relationship manager, I guess I believe that you know certain uh, type of uh, KPIs, some certain measurements that you can actually relate with it. So, uh, feel free to use certain uh, models or some uh, indicators to, to, to share with the, the hiring manager itself, right? Uh, is there any more questions? Uh, I think maybe if not... Yeah, we've uh, addressed them as we, as, as as we, we go, go along. Okay, yeah. good. Feel free to right. take screenshots, okay, guys, because uh, we won't be sharing the slides. And if we if we uh, upload the YouTube, uh, the, this video into YouTube, it will take some time. And uh, so do take screenshots. Uh, if you find any of these pointers are helpful for you, uh, mm. for you to also do some self-reflection, asking yourself, like the tip that Alan put here, provide real-life examples. So as you write your own, 
Of course, mm. you're not going to read a script at the interview, right? I mean, it's not possible. Yeah. Okay. So ask yourself, are you providing those evidences around real examples? Yeah. Okay, good. So let's let's so so we address how you structured your the way how you uh, uh share about who you are, the structure, and then we also address you know we don't just list the strength that we have, but we also demonstrate how we use the skills and experience along the way and showing that you know how we by using uh, a couple of things, matching with the relevant skill experience using numbers and data. And of course, uh, one of the ways is to use real life examples that can help you in that area. All right. And I believe in Tell Me About Cell, right? There are some blind spots, right, Shalin? Yes, that, yes. Uh, sometimes definitely. we do have blind spots and then maybe we, we can share a couple of blind spots mm. with our audience here that uh, during Tell Me About Cell or, or in general in the interview itself, I think it's important that uh, you stay, uh, you look good, uh, you look uh, clean and proper. But I think there are a couple of things that I would really like to share with you that we have come across. Uh, sometimes we, we have heard from the hiring manager or the HR saying that some candidates are overconfident. What do you mean by overconfidence? It means that they are sharing things that uh, are exaggerating. For mm. example, I, I know I can help to bring in a a lot of sales or I can come in because they, they if so, because they wanted to find a, they wanted to get a job so they are too excited and then they could be overconfident in a way of replying mm -hmm. certain questions quite exaggerating so that could be uh, one area another area could be also uh, their body language all right some of the body language is uh, some of the candidates probably may have to be watch out I mean I think it's important to have eye contact some of them may be rolling eyes, maybe disagreeing with what the interviewer has said. And then uh, unconsciously, they roll their eyes and then they look at somewhere else. I think this is something that, a blind spot that we need to take care. We need to, you know, we know that we are in an interview. We need to be able to have a two-way traffic, respect one another. Yeah. All right. Okay. Mm. And so overconfidence think... confidence maybe also like sometimes, um, uh, uh, one area need to be a little bit more mindful, I think, especially for tech experts out there who has many years experience. So always go back to uh, how do you remind yourself, right, that you share at appropriate level uh, because you don't want them to think that you're overly qualified or you're too, you know, um, too uh, haughty about what you know. So always go back to, I think, uh, the what is required in a job description that that level of years of experience and the operation requirement so that you 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 craft your your sharing your replies or your self introduction uh around that 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 kind of level of the role okay so so that they they don't think that you know you are trying to tell them what to do <laughs> so much on that you know and 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 words like uh, uh you know um I, my observation is this you know, mm. and so yeah, things like that. Then it it, it uh, helps to navigate around not being don't be too overly confident around. Yes, it, uh. yes. I think it you bring a not, point. Yeah. Yes, I think you bring a point. Some of the candidates would, would probably has much more knowledge, or they have probably have, they believe their expertise better, and maybe during a conversation in an interview, they may felt that they know more or better than the interviewer itself. So they tends to be a little bit you know. Telling what, telling the interviewer what yeah. to do, suggest them what to do. Correct. I think refrain from doing that. I think that is not something very respectful. So yeah, and also mm. I try to understand about the firm's culture and all that. Mm. So mm. you present a more, you know, the kind of personality you think that the firm would be attracted to, and it's not difficult to see because some of these firms they like to put their employee branding and all that on their LinkedIn and all. So so look out for, you know, what do they look out for in people who are are they looking for people very collaborative? How how do they nuance the the way they would they want to attract uh, collaborative uh, talents to their firm, so then mm. you can uh, you know adjust your pitch more okay. appropriately. Yeah. Good. And about oversharing. About oversharing. Yeah. What about mm. oversharing? Oversharing. I think you know. Uh. Like. Uh, likewise, I I shared earlier on. I think. Uh. When we address, when we share about, tell me about yourself, right? I mean, specifically to this question, right? I think it's important to keep it, uh, short and succinct. Maybe about a minute or two. All right, not too much into the details. Wait for 
questions to put, wait for further question to put you into another area which which just now I, I demonstrate with Shirlene. All right. Mm -hmm. And try not to share a lot of details unless they ask you to talk about it. Like earlier on, there's a contestant, uh, there's a participant who asked about, you know, how do you measure the metrics? Uh, mm -hmm. That is where, you know, another question that put you into going into the details and then you can okay. go into it. Try not to uh, answer a, one question and give 10 minutes of answers and with all the details. And then, you know, that will be too heavy, too much and... And I believe that interviewer is not going to listen to you, right? Yeah. So don't overshare. Be mindful. Uh, always in this area, I always advise people to have a what active listening. Active yeah. listening so, means listen to what they are asking. Yeah. 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 Surely, think, surely. Yeah. Those are really good points. And mm. I think, in particular, for people who are who are on career break, sometimes we might share more because we feel that we need to talk about why we took a career break. But I think um. If you prepare your your so called script about how you address the career break, then that will help you to slowly, uh, stop yourself from oversharing. Mm. Yeah, mm. Go, like Alan mentioned, active listening, mm. and and being uh, and observe that you you are, what you will want to share. What is you know too personal. You know you don't need to go into the detail how you arrange the family or situation during your career break. Don't need. Yeah, you can just mm. go into a simple liner and, mm. and be prepared. Usually sometimes they may ask, you know, so how is the arrangement like since now that you are preparing to return back to the industry, to the workforce? Mm. Then just yep. again, prepare a simple one liner or two. I think this is good enough because yeah. that would help you to also show that clarity of mind uh, and being able to think strategically uh, on the on the spot. Yeah, so that impression, that, that counts, right? Good, good, yeah. Addressing to the career break that, you know, you know that Jalyn has shared on, right? Uh, after sharing about, you know, probably, for example, you're giving a caregiving you know, for five years. And then, you know, uh, but make sure that before you apply for jobs, make sure that you get yourself prepared because let's say, for example, five years you have been doing caregiving and now you want to return job. I'm sure you need to prepare yourself in terms of look, review your skills and competencies. All right. What are the things I need to top up? What are the things I need to prepare myself to return to the workforce itself? All right. Uh, you can't simply go back to the workforce with a blank piece of paper or with yeah. a, maybe uh, something that it could be outdated. So important thing is to get the momentum, start mm. with something. And then mm. if you feel that, you know, you may need some guidance or some navigation in how to do it, speak to a career advisor, look at what are the training programs or what are the things that can help you to uh, jumpstart the game. All right. Mm -hmm. So I think that by 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 doing a little bit of work on that area, you can put across during the interview, right? And how you come back to work and how is your, uh, 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 your 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 passion or your you know your your genuine that you really want to come back to work and that's the that's the, that's the actions that's the things that you've been preparing yourself for, that. All right? So I think that could be one thing. Uh. The other area is uh, what I think that uh, the blind spot, that we, what we think that is blind spot is off track. A lot of times uh, when I have interviewing practice with my candidate, uh, they were so good until when we talked about certain hot spot, right? Or some, some interesting topic and then it went off track. All right, for example, uh, mm. you know, uh, one of my candidates was interviewing for a compliance and he or she was doing a relationship man manager role. And then uh, while sharing about the relationship manager role, uh, he or she was too excited and then went too much detail into relationship manager role, forgetting that he was actually applying for a compliance role. And then sharing too much of what you didn't apply for will help, will not get you, will not help the, the interviewer to see that you know, you are keen with that role that you're applying for and still thinking that you, you probably would like the role that you were previously in, All right? So be, be, be careful. Uh, some of the success you may have in your previous career that you like to share, but if it's not related to that particular role or you think you can't, there's nothing related to that particular role, yeah, keep the success, uh, a short success story, sweet, nice, and then just move on and try not to share too much detail and and get yourself off track in this area, all right? 
Shalene, do you have any example of Autrek or do you think? Um, no, I think like it is important, you know, sometimes um, in, in your career, there, there are definitely some bright sparks or that some projects that you, you, you are very passionate about or that really, you know, light up your eyes when you think about it. So, so do be, do be mindful, uh, you know, not to over, to go off tangent about it. Yeah. Like example, um, I was way before was from the advertising industry, you know, and I have some fun projects. But because if I'm interviewing like the example that um, Alan gave me, right? Interview for talent development manager. So it really the, my my achievement in 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 advertising, no matter how fun it was, uh, I shouldn't really be talking much about it, or shouldn't even be talking about it. You get what I mean? Mm. So so share what's relevant, um, uh, because the interviewers they would probably be uh seeing more than one person and some. <clears throat> big firm who will you know arrange their day for interview like you know this afternoon will be all about interviews or this full day so can you imagine they'll be listening to like uh, already two, two or three candidates or maybe five candidates before you so so it's really important to um uh cent center yourself around uh what is the most important thing you want to share about yourself that is relevant to the role that you are you are interviewing for yeah, yeah. so i think these are these are really uh important uh, uh Pointers to take note when yeah. you when you go for interviews. Yeah. yeah. So because if not, the, I I thought you will be applying for another role. So I thought yeah, I'm in the wrong room. If if you keep on talking about your advertising yeah. role. Yeah. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Oh, you know, like one thing is, I think uh some of our candidates are like example. Oh, you know, I've done these three, two or three key functions in uh, banking before. Yes. Then, but then they are going to interview for compliance. Yeah. And then sometimes they forget themselves and then they went to talk about the other stuff. Okay, so, then, so yeah, it's, then, it's important. Especially like, for well, those who are career switch, right, Shirling? Yeah, yeah. How, how, how will you, how will you, how would the career switch? Because, you know, if they're going to apply for a role that is not what they do, mm. and if they, then shouldn't they be talking about their role more because that was their, 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 their assisting, their current role, mm -hmm. but they, but they want to switch to another role. How would you advise them not to, of track. <laughs> okay, so I think it's a uh, it's uh, actually like a balancing skill because mm. uh definitely there's some transferable skills that you would have uh that gives you that propensity to pivot over. So for example, uh I had um someone from trading ops who was also uh so, you know, who was working, her key stakeholder was uh, RMs and, you know, department, right? So, private bankers. So, so she wants to go uh, pivot into front office, business manager, client services manager. And um, at first, she kept talking about the granularities around trading ops. So, obviously, the interviewer see her is like, so why, why am I uh, interviewing you? Because I'm trying to interview someone as a potential business or client services manager. So, <clears throat> so after some some conversations we had um to clarify her <clears throat> self introduction and also uh what are her star achievements like her projects you know the collaboration she had some breakthroughs she had with the RMs and in private banking side then things start to shift for her and she mm. become more confident to show that she is a uh, you know someone with potential to go into uh business uh services or client services kind of role okay. so yeah so because she's involved with a lot of uh, business process improvement projects already so that is already a plus point so so it's actually really during the interview being able to showcase this part about yourself yeah rather than to say that oh you know it's all their fault la their fault la they always say that i'm trading ops i cannot be with but then we need to look at ourselves as well uh how are we uh how what is the internal dialogue that we have uh in terms of our aspiration and what we are saying out uh, to pitch ourselves for uh, you know the the role that you want to pivot to yeah mm -hmm. so okay. this is based on a scenario of someone with some yeah. server skills and have accumulated uh, some good evidence to be able to pitch uh, mm. herself over lah huh? so okay. that's my idea yeah. I think it's important to relate that skills and experience and some of the transferable skills and how would you use it in your uh, the new the, the 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 role that you wanted to do. Yeah, for those career switch. All right. Okay, good. So uh we talk about let me refresh again. We talk about the the whole structure and then we talk about how to demonstrate. And then of course during my tell me about yourself, 
these are some of the blind spots that we pick it up from our day-to-day -day work with our candidates itself. So we'd like to share with this with you. And then now we come to the next golden questions. All right. All right. So that is very, very, uh, you know, this is question is very, very powerful because it really looks into your motivation. Why do you want to join our company itself? Maybe, maybe let's practice. Uh, I mean, not practice. Shalin again. Let's, okay. It's Shalin again. Okay. Shalin. Why do you want to join us? IBM. <laughs> yes, why do you want to join IBM? <laughs> okay. Um, I think my passion for career development uh is very much aligned to uh, actually IBF mission and and the um the, the way of um how uh, it's being empowered to help uplift the industry talents. Uh really impressed with the company's uh commitment really to industry growth and seeing the true value of people development. Um is something that I I I have uh, I have been involved with, and I see the transformative power of providing individuals with the support and resources uh, to navigate their career, uh, to show them possibilities. Uh, I think that is um, I think the key uh, area that uh, really attracts me to to your company. Mm. Okay. Good. Thank you very much, Shirley. I think quite quite a uh, a uh, uh, quite a valid reason that why you want to join us right so what happened here is actually Shirlene before she do her before she went for the interview she did have she did her research to find out who is IBF and what does IBF do and what is the company missions and she aligned what she do with the company missions all right so this is one way that you can actually find your answer in why do you want to join us? Right. So in for Shirley case, she said, you know, she realized IBF is committed to the industry growth and people development. And then she expressed in terms of what she do is aligned with that mission. All right. So for this, another question for Shirley. Why why this role? Why career? Why uh why this talent, talent development, development role. manager role? Why not mm. other role? Mm. Yeah, I think um the prospect of working directly mid careers where um, you know your company focus on, it's uh, highly motivating to me. Uh, I really um love the experience of uh, helping them to with tools or even uh with the skills you know bring up to a new level to help them to have more success. And and as as you know in today's context about career success, it's beyond just uh, that pay. It's uh, many other factors. So I. I'm really drawn to the opportunity to work with industry partners that um I have previously collaborated with. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Okay, good. Well done. Uh I think what Shirlene has mentioned in that conversation is she actually talked a little talk on her, her personal motivation. Why she would like to join IBF and uh in terms of she have seen uh how individuals has been transformed and in terms of the way how she, uh, in terms of her job, providing uh, support and resources to them, right? And the other area is also, Shirlene has actually put a, she actually matched and fit herself into that particular role because she have read the job description or she have found out, you know, what is the requirements for this role. And then she understand that what skills that she has before for example, it was talking about the mid career risk. So she exhibit her understanding of the, the needs of the mid career risk and how she can help them to equip for success. And she also realized maybe one of the requirements in the job description is to work with external stakeholders. And she shared about herself working with industry partners and how she collaborate with them. You see, so in this way, she fit in, you know, with what she has with the job description or the information or the research that she has found in the uh, in all the resources or, or the doing her job search for this role before she went for the interview. All right. Okay. Well, but so by saying that, I think important thing is uh there are some common pitfalls when answering these questions. Do you agree with me, uh Shirlene? Because uh Sometimes yeah. uh, when we ask, uh, if we are not prepared for this question, why do you want to join us? Right? Mm. Then we tend to give 
some of the very, very uh, uh, pitfall, I call it the common pitfall questions, answers, sorry, pitfall answers. All right. So so one of the pitfall answers could be a generic response, say, oh, because you are a branded company, for example, you are a so-and-so company and you are very popular, uh, that's why I want to join you. Uh, there's a branding because of your branding. You know, these are very generic questions. It makes the interviewer feel that you know you know nothing much about us, except for just the brand itself, mm -hmm. right? What you know about us is on the surface itself, right? The other area is also probably trying to answer this question by talking about benefits. I I've, I've heard that your company pay very well. I heard that during the you know year end, uh. Uh, every staff was given a Rolex. <laughs> so I want to join you. You know, that something like that, talk about benefits. Then uh, it likely shows that, you know, you are more on monetary gain, right? Whoever can pay you higher, higher or pay you somewhere, you will move, All right? That is not something, okay, would be a motivating factor for them to, hit, to, to understand your motivation, why you want to join them. Uh, the other area, unrealistic expectations. Uh, for example, when they ask you, you know, why you will join us, uh, you come in with some kind of answers like, uh, I want, I believe joining you, I, I can uh, grow my career and become a, you know, your CEO. You know, some kind of uh, exaggerating, unrealistic. Maybe you can, but it is not something that you want to share during this interview. Be realistic. Uh, we be realistic with expectation. Talk things that you know that could bring you to what they can see in the in the near future, All right? And I think Shirley have mentioned earlier on also. Uh, one of the reason that uh, uh, you shouldn't be talking bad about your previous employer and compare and share that you know because I want to join you because my company right now is very toxic my company right now you know you know they 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 don't have this benefit they don't have that benefit I think you have I want to join you you know you shouldn't be talking about negative things about your previous employer so yeah so these are just four common uh, pitfalls that answers that we have uh, we have experienced I think there are more uh, if you have some good uh, pitfall questions or answers that you have feel free to share with feel free to share with us all right okay Shirley, do you have any 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 other thing any other things to to add on for this pitfall um, in, when no, answering I, I think, why do you uh, want to join us yeah yeah why do you want to join us right i think mm -hmm. it's uh, important to focus on um areas that you could contribute and uh where you can um bring you know higher value to to the firms, uh, whether you are a product manager or whether you are ops person, um, I think at the end of the day, it's about um, why do they need to hire you mm. if um, there's somebody else who also maybe have similar background as you. So what makes you stand out? So um, if you're gonna say, oh no, la, nothing the same, we do the same thing, then then it's quite like uh likely that you will you will not be selected for the second interview, mm. because um I think how you could stand out is really about um the growth mindset that you want to present, uh during the interview, um to the interviewer because um if everybody in, assuming knows about the product then why do they want to hire you and not, uh the the person who was interviewed earlier on, right? So I think um important to display a growth mindset then that will help you to avoid some of these uh, common pitfalls. Um, and uh, again, I think it's really about practicing with yourself first. Uh, and of course, if you do need help, uh, do reach out to us at IBF Careers Connect uh, to just um, help yourself to see how you sound and also maybe to shape your answers a bit better. Again, this interviewing skills is not really just for job search. In fact, uh, if, you, if you've done it well and and gain more confidence and clarity in what you want in your career. You can even use it when you're uh, having a performance review uh, with your boss. You know, you yeah, really exactly. shape it accordingly. Yeah. Maybe maybe a promotion, right? Yeah. Or even you know you are looking at new uh new vertical skills that you want to build. Then this could be an area that you could practice with yourself first. Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah. So, do you want to so, answer any questions? Yes, yes, yes. I, I guess there's a couple of questions where we address this this question, uh, this this interviewing questions. Okay, so uh, there's a question asking, you know, if you have been in the current company for more than 10 years. Another question is, why do you want to join? So why do you decide to leave? Yeah. So, uh, well, I, I guess uh, you if you have been in one company for 10 years and and you decided to leave, uh, I think there must be a, I think there are many, there are many reasons mm. uh, that you want to leave can be personal, can be any reasons. But I think it's important to find one good reason, a positive reason why you want to leave. Because if you're going to leave, you need to leave with a positive note. What All is right, considered need, positive, Alan? Would you want to share? Uh, in terms of uh, you want a career growth. You want to grow. You believe uh, you want to be in an area where you want to see opportunity. You want to uh, 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 probably... Uh, move into this direction because you feel that this is the area I want to specialize in. Yeah, so that something that will help them to see where mm. you're heading to. Yeah, right? I think there's a good point about mm. area to want to specialize because some people mm. maybe have accumulated many different uh, mm. uh, functional experience, example, and then they now want to move into one specific area. So I think you're right. Picking that spot where what you want to focus on as a reason, that yeah. would be um, a more professional and objective angle to look at, right? Yep, that's right. So, uh, okay. And uh, the other question I think here is, how do, you, how, how do you know how you can add value to the company based on your skill set? Wouldn't you know what they want just based on job description? Uh, yes, yes. I think I think that's 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 the whole point of research. Find out yeah, what the company wants right. and and align with what you have. Then you will see what kind of value can you can put at the table. All right? You may have a lot of skill sets, but what are the skill sets they need? And you exhibit it and you demonstrate it. That is what I call value. But if you're exhibiting or sharing this that area of skills that you have which is good but they may not need it in their business sense then it may not consider a value to them all right so do, do check the job description to find out more information yeah uh, do check exactly do do review your skill your strength and mm. your skill sets and what are the relevant one that you feel that you want to spotlight and mm. share during an interview yeah right so i i think if i could add really i think in terms of job description make sure you you have a, a, a pretty clear understanding especially mm. if it's within the field of work that you've always been involved with then mm. uh that it really shows uh, your how you truly understand um, the scope and parameters of, of such kind of role mm. you know because uh it, it's not uncommon that you know during this time there's a lot of restructuring and and company is trying to improve their outputs and their profits right so if based on your professional lens, based on your understanding on, of the job description, what do you think um, would be most required by the firm for this role? And what is your strongest credit that you could bring to the table? Mm. So I think it's really about matching both sides, right? Yeah. Your best understanding about the job description, what is the top requirement, what's most critical for this role to, to, to be, to, for this person to, to, to do well and be a contributor and how you what is it that you can bring to the firm so that you could you could meet the outcome that mm. is being created for this role yeah that's right well said uh Shirlin. and I, I i think it's also important that you also know what type of company that you are applying for and when you go for interview for example if you are work applying for a startup and of course you have a lot of experience but you need to understand what the startup would need their business need is Probably looking into strategies, looking into setting up foundations, looking into, you know, uh, building up certain processes. And this is where you may want to highlight certain of your key strengths in this area, spotlight it to during the interview. All right. If you if you spotlight everything or you spotlight, you know, things like, for example, expansion, change management, all these things, which a startup may not require at this stage of time, then it's something that is good that you have, but you, they will not see the value in it. All right? 
On the other hand, if you are work applying for companies that are multinational companies who are going to expand to overseas and you know they're going to have different offices in different parts of the world, and this is where you can actually share your change management in, you can share your uh, uh, process development, your expansion strategies, you can share you know how you uh, 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 work with different teams in different regional office. In fact, maybe some of your skills could be your soft skills could be your language skills or have spoken, I, I'm, I'm good in this language, knowing that you, they have an office in that particular con country itself. Then by relating that, that kind of skills or, or, or ability that you have, then by showing that aligned with the business need, it shows a value in it. Right? That is where you get your, you are being seen as a strong candidate. All right? So I hope, I think this point can give you a little bit better picture in terms of how, in terms of the interview, not just a uh, one way, but you need to understand the employers and also the law, uh, the, the roles that you're going to apply for, right? In order to speak that, communicate that relevant language and the right language and uh, spotlight the right things during the interview. Okay. Uh, I got retrenched and then uh, in the interview and uh, uh, do I tell the employers uh, uh, what if they lowball me and find me desperate? What do you think? Uh, I mean, uh, Shirlin, you want Can to... Can I suggest? Yeah. Uh, so I think um, retrenchment, I think uh, it's, it's um, uh, unfortunately, it's, it's become quite a norm nowadays. Mm. Uh, I understand, we, I mean, we, we see a lot of candidates as well coming mm. through to us, not just people who, you know, resign from the job. But I think it's important to to be objective about it. In today's climate, I think um, um, typically HR would understand if you share that, you know, the company went through restructuring and and uh, and uh, you left your firm uh, in March, okay? Uh, so that's, then you go on to talk about the, the role and pitch yourself, your suitability for it. Um, I think it's really um, how you present yourself um, to set the right impression that you want with the interviewer. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Um, I think the most importantly is that we do not think of ourselves uh, mm. that way uh, and, and stay objective and professional in terms of where, uh, how do you like to uh, value add and, and make things better in, with the firm that you are going for in, in interviews. Mm. Uh, a lot of time, it's really about the attitude that uh, the employers want to see. Like example, if they were to ask you a technical questions around this um, business operation or business process uh, transformation, um, of course you can share your solution around it. But how you share it actually, actually shows a lot around your intrinsic motivation, which is your inner motivation, and as well your attitude towards solutioning. Mm, mm, right, mm. because um, uh, uh, much as. You know, uh, I think that going through a career transition is uh, challenging, but I think um, that is not, uh, you know, uh, that's not to be discussed during an interview. I think stay centered again on what role you are being interviewed for, what you think are your strongest credit, and how do you think those would help the firm uh, with their situation that they are facing, which is why they are, you know, looking to hire someone for this role and hope that this person coming could help them to solve more problems. Yeah. Mm, okay. Anything I think else to add? Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, I think it's quite what you have shared, everything really. I think for retrenchment, you just have to be uh, honest and upfront. All right. I think uh, nowadays, you know, retrenchment is no longer a stereotype that, you know, is, mm. is about you. We understand that companies are going through restructuring, cost cutting, operations, all these things. So, uh, important thing is, uh, don't don't let it affect you. <clears throat> Important thing is, you know, look into uh, uh, how would you come back quickly. All right, try not to stay too long in the, you know, too long away from the workforce. If you plan to come back to work again, quickly come back again and then find, uh, you know, the right training or the, is it, maybe it's time for you to relook into. You know, you have been working every day. It may not be time for you to upskill yourself or reskill yourself. Maybe time to realign your skill sets, polish up, sharpen it, yeah. and then back to, to for the interview for the role that you want to apply for. I think yes. uh I think if you 
are there, you know your work well, it, it's not so much about whether you are retrenched or not retrenched, right? Yeah. yeah, I think it's more about what can you bring the value to the table. Yeah. All right. right. So I think you may want to look, try not to talk too much about retrenchment. Yeah. Right. You can tell them about, you know, yep, a retrenched due to unfortunate situation, but bring that perspective back to the table and say, you know, this is mm -hmm. what I've been doing and this is my success and this is thing I've been doing alone. That's and right. I think, yeah. Because there's uh, so, so much news around, you mm -hmm. know, other industries as well. So I think it is not really, uh, you know, like the old days, right, where mm. retrenchment is not very common. So, so mm. I think, um, uh, uh, don't be so hard on yourself. Mm. You know, um, just take it light touch. You know, oh, the company went through restructuring. That's it. for stop, and then move on about yep. introducing yourself. Really focus on take the radar back to you. How you can contribute. How you can make things better. I think with that. Anger, I think it's really for the hiring manager to decide uh, what are his or her priorities already. Because mm. obviously, if those of you in operations, you will know there are many fires to fight today that uh, maybe yesterday need to be solved, right? So, yeah. So, I think it's um, put forth your best and um, leave the hiring manager to decide what are his or her priorities. Sometimes, even though you are not select, it could be the some other fires are stronger and they need some other areas of uh, specialization, some other area of expertise. Uh, to address that that critical uh you know uh, issues that the, this role this person need to come in to do yeah yeah okay so I think if you uh if you feel that you know you need to speak to someone a little bit more personal and in area can write to us at the IBF to ask yeah. and speak to a career advisor for that to help you in terms of getting back to the workforce again all right so uh okay. We come to the end of two questions today. Do you still have time for one more question, Shirlyn? Yeah, yeah, I we think... still have time. We still have time. No problem. Ah, uh, okay. So maybe we give a bonus question, right? Yes. Okay. So guys, maybe put into the Q and A. What do you think is the questions? Uh, after the inter I mean, just before the end of the interview, what's the commonly asked questions? Just before the the end of the interview, anyone? Do you have any further questions? Well, well done. Yes. This is one of the very common questions that interviewer like to ask. Do you have any question for us? All right. Yes. Okay. I get so, candidate ask me as well. So what should I ask? Mm, can I ask about? <laughs> so maybe salary? Shari, yes. What, what, do you ask about salary? I mean, you have candidate ask for salary. My candidate will ask me, can I ask about salary? Ah, okay. <laughs> do you okay, what else what, what else do you do you have do you see? Uh okay, because right now there are some firms who go hybrid, some firms are not hybrid, right? They they yeah. will require staff to go back. So so the candidate is asking wondering if is it a right time to ask? Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. I also have a candidate who asks about, you know, you know, about personal question about the interviewer. You know, I think they are excited to make you know, wanted to establish the relationship. Then talk about you know you know about personal things like oh we like to eat this you know shall we go for one day shall we go for together to join I think I think we need to really be careful because sometimes when we interview right unless you know the person very well you he happen to be your interviewer but then I think you should also respect that session that is an interview right you make sure that you know you get it do, uh, do it in a professional manner itself yeah anything else. Shirlene, do you have any kind of uh, questions they normally mm. ask? I think ask about dress code. Dress code, right. Some they ask about... Uh, uh, oh, questions. some they ask whether... Uh, okay, okay. Um, you know, we, we are all quite impressed with the in uh, earlier years, right? You know, with the Google Pantry Office. Yes, yes, yes. Hello. Uh, not not often, not often. Some people ask yes. about yeah, welfare, yeah. Uh, welfare, welfare, you know. welfare, benefit, <laughs> salary that you mentioned along salary, right? They ask a yeah. salary, right? Yeah. I think it's I think it's you just have to be careful, like you know, unless you are being offered a that, that role, then you may want to talk about the salary. So be mindful, uh it's not find the right time, you know, the right interview. Okay, so normally the interview try to avoid all these compensation and benefit questions. 
All right. The other can thing, we ask, I think, like, Alan, Alan, can uh, we yes. ask about, uh, can we ask for the contact number of the, of the interviewer? Well, I think that is, uh, that is into a personal space, really. Yeah, okay, so I how think, do we navigate that? I think it's important that, you know, when you're called out for interview, right? So yeah. you probably, someone may have con someone may have contacted you and someone may have emailed you, right? So for example, for myself, the HR will have contacted me and emailed me, right? So then I may want to go back to the HR and ask, you know, can I have the email address of the interviewer? I just want to state your reason. I want to send send a thank you note to them and for their interview. Uh, that for that purpose, I think that is cool. But if it's for the purpose of, I want to contact the interviewer, uh, uh, can I have the contact number? No, for me, if I'm the interviewer, I'll be scared. What, what are you trying to do? Are you going to call me at night in the evening or midnight to tell me, do I get a job? Do I get a job? You know, I'll be very scared that if I give you my contact number, you'll be stalking me or you'll be doing other things. No? So this is something that I think is not professional to do that. All right. But uh, to get an email from HR, if the HR is uh, okay to give you the e email of the hiring manager, yeah, right. Thank you. Note. Appreciate what you what you have been through and, and thank them for it. All right. The other area I think is important that I need to mention is uh, don't ask questions that you can find through your those information in the website or your, uh, I mean, don't ask questions that is that you never did, you never do any research about the company. All right, All right. Uh, for example, you may not, if you are applying for IBF and you may not want to ask, what does IBF do? Uh, that, that, that is a very, very uh, question that's showing that you are disinterested in the company itself and you do not want to find out more information. And I may not even want to give you that role because it doesn't display your genuine, sincere uh, 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 to join us. Yeah. All right. So I think these are questions that you may want to avoid. So the question is, what kind of questions should I ask? Anyone? What kind of questions should I ask? I think we have some suggestions in the Q&A. <laughs> Very good uh, suggestions. Okay. Let, me, let me look at what, what Guys, can you give me some questions? Some, some questions yeah. that you should ask, yeah. Yes. Can you ask about the team, ask, team yeah, dynamic? Team dynamic workers? Someone in, mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Can you ask about team dynamic? How many workers does this manager work with? I think it's okay, it's good to dive in a little bit more, understand the team dynamic and maybe a little bit of, uh, you know, uh, who am I working with? Is it, uh, I know I know my, my colleagues will be career advisor, or working with HR, how big is the team, and how is the team that I make? I think it's okay to ask a little bit more in mm. that context. <clears throat> mm. Yeah, mm. because these are some questions that you may not be able to get it from that uh, website. Yeah. All right. Okay. So, is it to ask okay to view the hiring manager LinkedIn profile before interview? Do you do you view my profile before I interview you, Shalin? <laughs> no. <laughs> no? <laughs> but is it okay to view? I think it's fine. You know, I think everybody is checking out everybody's uh, profile. <laughs> yeah. so, so I think it's yeah. okay to view, but don't view so many times, you know, be discreet yeah. about it. Be professional, basically. I think uh, I think everyone is, uh, you know, a professional here. So mm. don't stop people's account. Don't keep looking, 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 you know. And of course, I think it, if it is, uh, there, there's some uh, LinkedIn influencer like to encourage Right to to uh to reach out and all that, but I think do it with the right touch now. Don't don't uh, come across as you know um stalking people. I think then that's not a very good um taste uh, to to it now. I think it's you know need to give people some space if you do check them out on LinkedIn. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah. I think LinkedIn you can check it out. I think it's okay. Uh, there's another interesting question. Do you? Do you can you ask about company culture and what and uh and and is there any OT working hours right working hours <laughs> and, yeah okay I think usually right some firms if they they certain roles they require long hours they will tell you uh uh you know they will share with you when they talk about the work job scope you know the 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 working hours and all that because if if this is a role where in the past maybe people have quit because of the OT hours and all that yeah you. You know, the hiring manager will be seasoned enough to to share about about that already. 
yeah. Uh, yeah. But or, or, or there's probably a norm around this kind of job role. Usually this is the kind of working hours. Maybe there'll be night calls, you know, like especially usually, like in the uh, past I had okay. the yeah. yeah. So so maybe I pick it up from Shaleen. I think uh when you talk about uh, OT, right? Or uh, how long you're gonna work. I mean we talk about OT. I think if that job is something very specific that you need to do a shift work or it is in a different odd odd hours. I think it's good to ask a little bit clearer because you are prepared to join the company with that understanding expectation that this is going to be a, a, a odd timing job, uh, shift work, and then it's okay to ask about this uh, questions. But if it's a normal hours job and you ask, you're really starting to ask, you know, is there any OT or these things? I think that part may touch a little bit on the benefits of compensation or maybe some questions that. Uh, be uh, a little bit negative yeah i think try not to uh, but if you really want to find out i think there's a way you can always visit glassdoor to find out whether this company if this is company and the review is always talking about ot then i think you should avoid if you can't take ot then i think you should avoid applying or even go for the interview right you don't want to go there and ask people do you you know do you do i have to work ot or not all right uh the other question is uh uh, how about asking the company culture? Uh, and yeah, so I think it's okay to ask the company culture, but I think if you can find out some uh, uh, research or you can find out information about the company, and of course with some resources that uh, Glassdoor, or you may want to have an understanding of the culture and ask a little bit more deeper questions. Like I understand that the culture is like a family setting, you know, closely knit, not many. Yeah, so uh, in terms of uh, uh, reporting, uh, you know, uh, is it a lot of layers or is it just direct to my supervisor itself? You know, that something like that a little bit deeper would make it a little bit like you are showing your interest in that particular role that you want to apply for. Okay, right. Okay, uh, I think there's a lot of questions here. Uh, okay, so maybe let me conclude it. I know there's a lot of questions here asking what. Let me conclude. The whole idea here is don't ask, do not ask questions for the sake of asking. All right? Make sure you prepare some questions. All right? Ask questions that shows that you have the understanding of the company and you are the fit of the role. Like earlier on, I mentioned on that uh, you may want to ask questions in terms of like, for example, Shirlin is applying for talent development manager. All right? She may not want to ask questions like, uh, what does the talent development manager do in, in your company? That is, obviously, you do not know about the role. Then, maybe Shirley will probably will say, I understand the talent development manager in your company, and uh, may I know what is that, met or what is that uh, systems or particular systems that you are using right now? Uh, or particular, you know, how do you, in a way, uh, what are the area of, a met kind of, what kind of metrics do you measure? Would it be this, 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 this? display some knowledge what do you have all right something a little bit deeper to make yourself you know that you shows that you really do your research about the company and you understand uh, certain systems which uh, you just want to find out which system they, they focus on for example in the sharing case itself all right the other important thing here I want to share is when when you are hearing a response from the interviewer yourself I think it's important to establish the eye contact and acknowledge and hear them out and you know uh, uh, try not to go into a uh, debate or argument or trying to correct the person i think uh well you ask a question you ask a question they give you a response i think in an interview set setting i think maintain being respectful again right right and finally if you have any follow-up questions after the response please do ask uh, if you do not have uh, don't ask for the sake of asking again. All right, so stay stay within that boundary. Uh, it's important. Uh, the whole idea here is to display that you are a genuine uh, applicant and you are keen and you are interested in our company and you know what the role is entail and you know what the role call for. All right, I think this is uh, the questions that you should probably ask. All right, uh, 
okay, maybe I'll take one last question, one more question for this. Can we ask if it's a replacement role? What is the reason of the last person to leave the company? Is it too aggressive? Shirley, what do you think? Mm, I think it's um not at the first interview. Mm. Because Agreed. first interview is just at the beginning of the process, mm. right? And some firms go to two, three interviews, maybe four, right? Because the hiring manager is trying to think, you know, which which fire they want to save first when they look at the next candidate they want to bring in, right? Mm -hmm. So I think, yeah, I, uh, maybe leave it for a second or final interview. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because mm -hmm. by then, you know whether you're shortlisted or not. First interview is really about lending a good impression, guys. So good impression meaning that, you know, you must display good attitude, growth mindset, contributor, you know, uh, I think that's important. Yeah. I mean, unless um this role is maybe like um a project manager that I need to handle very challenging stakeholders, then you know, then you hear a different kind of interview questions already. Mm. Then you need to still be yourself because the thing is there's certain person that you know uh all things being equal, like technical skills, right? Then there's also the personality part where we'll decide whether or not you get a job. So if the certain personality that, that the hiring manager require, but, it, but it's not you, right? Then, you know, maybe it's really not the right job for you. Yeah. Mm. So when but, you go for interview, do know that. Um, I think this is a very good tip early on as well that we had in our one of our webinar, which is about, you know, don't always think that, you know, when you go for interview, it's people accessing you. But it's also you to assess whether you want to be part of the team. So don't forget this very important point here. You know, you are also assessing whether hey, you want to you want to commit your next career chapter to this firm or not, you know. Yeah, mm. what do you want to show in your resume after you are successfully selected? Are you able to um, accumulate or acquire the kind of growth milestone that you want to put in your resume, you know, when you move uh, to that firm? Yeah, it's, it's and also, important. yeah, that, that, I think that, that that's important. Not not, not try to ask this uh, aggressive questions or, or what we call aggressive questions. I, I think whether it's a replacement role, whether it's a new role, if you can find out through some, because yeah, yeah. for a startup, yeah. could be a new role, yeah. right? Uh, so you can get some information for maybe yeah. certain role, like maybe in, uh, in certain roles that has been operating for quite some time, mm. it could be a role that is a replacement. So, the, mo the most important thing here is how would you come in at value? It's not mm. whether uh, am I being replaced or uh, am, I, am I replacing someone or not? Yeah. So yeah. that that point should not be <coughs> of much importance to you at that moment. Yeah. Great question. Think, mm. Yeah. So yeah. I think uh, before mm. we go on, I mm. think uh, mm. I, I think uh, Alan has shared a lot of uh, tips mm. and also uh, highlights and all. Um, yeah. Would you want I to... think, yeah. So maybe we we, 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 we summarize it that what we have learned, what have, we have shared today, and hopefully the learnings uh, uh, you, you guys have, can take away from these three important mm. learnings. We have summarized it. First thing important is to prepare yourself. All right, preparation is very important. If you go for an interview without preparing yourself, without knowing the companies, without knowing what the job fit, uh, what the roles or what your relevant skills is, you are going to be nervous. All right, so some of the one of the questions is I'm so nervous. Okay, preparing yourselves can help a little, can help you to understand, uh, to 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 compose yourself well during the interview. All right, and where can you get all this information? Website, social medias, and probably look at the recent projects what they do. Find all informations in this area. Second thing, I think we share a bit of how to demonstrate your strength. Don't try to just list your strength and say, you know, I'm good in this, I'm good in that, I have this, I have that, I have knowledge in this, I have knowledge in that. Demonstrate how would you use this strength, skills, and and your experience in relate it in an example, real life example that you learn. All right, use numbers and data that to showcase, you know, really, you know, your uh your capability, your ability. All right. Lastly, I think we always mention articulate your value proposition. Communicate clearly your value, right? Whether make sure that you understand what their needs is, communicate the right value on the table. I think it's important that you align uh, with the job fit, uh, the, the job requirement and make yourself a you know, fit for that position. All right, three key learning points we hope you take away from this session. So 
Uh, we run the poll. We can yeah. we run the poll here? Uh, yeah. So I mean, we mm. hope the 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 this discussion that we all co create this learning together has mm. been meaningful for you, and mm. uh and for us to be able to do uh continue such sessions, we really will hope to have your uh help to um provide us with some uh feedback on how useful it is, and the approach that we use here is really about co creation, collective learning, so everybody can learn as much as possible uh in this one and a half hour, so really uh, appreciate that, and we're gonna contribute our next uh ten minutes or so to the questions that uh, we have not answered. So yeah, Alan, over to you. Yes, yes. We will try to answer as many questions and my career advisor colleague behind is also helping us to answer some of the questions. So uh, let's work on it. Uh, Jalyn, uh, I think let's pick up some questions. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay, so, so first question, maybe I left and quit your job due to toxic board environment. How do I address this interview and ask why I quit your job? All right. So again, uh, you, what we've learned today is never bad mouth or never tell things that are negative during the interview. I think there must be something really look into an area where what are the good things that you know you leave a toxic place. Yes, you leave a toxic place, but what, what about your career? How will you see your career? Where will you want to go with your career? Will you want to find the same job again? Or if you're gonna find the same job again, why would this why would this company? So look into the angle, why would you want to join this company? How much you know about this company? How much you know about it? Does it align with your aspiration? All right. Instead of sharing your 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 grievances, which will not make, uh, will not be attractive, will not make you an attractive uh, 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 job job uh, applicants. All right. What do you think, uh, Shirley? Mm. I think uh definitely so uh because you need to be um you know uh objective because I think people mm. dynamic is something that. Um, it's very personal and uh, you know unique. So, uh, even though maybe the last role uh, that you had was a very toxic boss or uh, environment, okay, I think it's most importantly is um, uh, focus on you know um, hey where you have stopped growing maybe you know mm. um, be be professional again on that and and in the interview to mention that this is an area that you that is uh, close to your heart and you really want to pursue more and deepen your uh, expertise in this area and that's why you're here for interview of this role mm, that's right yeah. okay so another question i think uh quite a long question but i think this uh friend here is asking uh, how can a candidate sound out questions like work-life balance working hours corporate compliance all these things i think important thing here is uh you you got to understand like what shirley mentioned the first interview probably will be assessing uh, whether are you a keen candidate or are you a genuine candidate or yeah so I think important is to show who you are what you do your skill sets how you align and if let's say you are able to move to second or third and you feel that you know you come to the probably uh, let's say regarding the work-life balance working hours and that I, I think uh, you can probably sound out to the HR because HR will be the one who probably can answer you or give you a better picture rather than the hiring manager. All right. Uh, because HR will come up with policies, HR policies and all these things, and they need to make sure. So maybe a second interview, third interview, then probably you will want to ask this question. Corporate culture, compliance culture. Uh, so so it's two or two maybe if you want to ask about corporate culture and compliance culture, I think important thing is uh you need to ask yourself, uh does it relate to the function that I'm going to do? All right. How would it be seen? All right. So what would you like, what would you like to know? For example, you're applying for a relationship manager role and uh, this kind of work value environment would be very competitive. And I would not think you want to ask whether is this environment very competitive? No, that may not, that may sound like you may not know about this role as much. All right. So if you are a, Comply, you're applying for a compliance uh, job or you you work with certain com functions with the compliance and or you may want to uh, understand that you know whether this company is uh, uh, how strict are they on the compliance area I guess all these things uh, depends whether the interviewer uh, uh, want to ask want to answer I mean depends on which level again 
like I said, the first level is the, the first interview is really talking about yourself first. And then if you are able to dive deep into the work area and it's related to your function, I think it's okay to ask this question. Yeah. Uh okay. Next one. When uh, when when can oh yeah, go ahead, Charlene. Oh no, no, uh, next question then. Okay. Yeah. When when can I get started? Uh, I'm not so sure what, what do you mean by when can you get started, but if you like to see a career advisor, you can always uh, later I'll fresh the Oh no, I think this was when uh, uh you know uh, we were asking everyone, hey, what uh, what do you think is the last question uh ah, okay, okay. asked at the okay, end of the Okay, I'm so sorry. Uh, so, yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay, and then uh, the other one. Strength and weakness. Strength and weakness. Yes, yes. Strength and weakness are common questions. Common questions, yeah. yeah. Common question, yes. Uh, agreed with it. Uh, we'll get back to you. We'll get back uh, to you. That's usually from the HR, right? Yeah, we'll get back to you. Okay. okay. What and... should be the best dress code? Uh, yeah, you know, I think we can ask it this way. Like, you know, what, what, is, a, what is a typical dress code uh, mm. in, what, in, in this firm? I think mm. that is okay to ask. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I think uh, the other question is, uh, can we ask them, what do you think are the traits of someone in this position? Who can do well? Uh, well, you can ask uh, these questions, but I think important thing is you need to also understand uh, this role. What are the requirements and what are the job scope? And, and what, what are the qualities for this role that, that you're applying for? Do not ask them this question by not by not showing that you know about this role. Mm -hmm. So I think it's important that you understand this role, showing that first, and then you can ask them, you know, yeah. Mm. Okay, maybe we can oh, answer uh, mm. uh, maybe last two questions, a short mm. one. Okay, maybe I okay. Can, can ask you, Alan, is mm. it still advisable for candidate to send a thank you email after interview? Uh, it is recommended that mm -hmm. uh, I would do it yeah, because I think it's polite, I think, is uh, to show uh, that, you know, you appreciate the time that they spend with you. And the whole idea here of interview is one thing is, is to build relationship, all right? To connect, to build that person. I think you may want to show their appreciation and then, you know, connect with them. But do remember, uh, when you send a thank you note, don't write a lot of things in the thank you note because I have someone who come to me and say, they write a thank you note, but they write again, why they are fit for that job and then they explain like a cover letter again. So try to avoid that because you have already been to the interview, right? You just need one to thank them. You just want to build their connections and wait for them to come back to you again, all right? And any one last questions, uh, Shirley? Hello? I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay. Right. Yeah, I think we asked, uh, we, we look at some of the earlier questions. So, okay. um, okay, so, the... okay, so thank you for your poll. And any more, any more poll, we leave it. Uh, please help us with the poll again. Yeah, uh, we try to answer maybe one last question, Shirley. Yeah, I think, uh, usually, I think people want to know as well, like after the interview, right? How long should they wait to, to decide oh, whether it's a go or no go to second interview? What is a typical timeline they should they should look at? Mm. Yeah. Every, every yeah. company is different, and uh, a typical timeline could be like um, maybe less than a month. Mm. Less than a month. Uh, yeah. So yeah. Uh, you can, I mean, if anything more than a month, I think, uh, it 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 really is uh, could, could could mean that you know they they may not be considering, but mm. I do have cases that uh, after three months they come back to the person again. Yeah. So some some yeah. recruitment Sometimes. process a little bit longer, but also depend on the season. Let's say mm. you are applying that job and you went for interview just nice before Christmas and the long holiday, or just before a certain period of time, then do expect certain delay, right? So I guess it's important that you know. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Thank uh, you for all the questions. Yeah. So, mm. and uh, we noticed some people were asking whether, uh, you know, our career advisory service is mm. uh, only for financial uh, and banking talents. Mm. Uh, well, of course, uh, you know, we are set up with a mandate to help individuals 
who are within this space, but because we also have, uh, you know, uh, inquiries from people who aspire to uh, pivot into the financial sector. So we do, uh, we are also open to, uh, you know, uh, individuals who, who wish to have a conversation with us uh, to understand what are the maybe options available out there. Maybe a direct perm job may not be the option, you know, what, what can they explore and consider because everybody has different priorities. So if you are not sure, you know, do come reach out to us. I think my colleague has put in our uh, email address for you to uh, actually, uh, you know, uh, write to us with your request. Okay. Mm, yep. Yeah. And mm. last but not least, uh, I just want to say that you are unique. All right. Uh, there's no template for an interview. There's, uh, you do not need to copy and try to intimate, intimate uh, it, uh, try to be someone else that you are not. All right. Your unique, uh, uh, important thing is really look into your strength and how you spotlight the right thing. All right. The other thing is also what I would always share with most of my candidates is, uh, practice make perfect, right? If you need more practice, uh, come and see a career advisor. If you don't have one to help you to practice, I think uh, this is our email address and our, our social media, right? You can write an email to us, uh, scan the QR code, write an email to us and say that you would like to see a career advisor. If you really have a career advisor and you think you need more practicing, reach out to them and we are most happy to help you with that. All right. With that, I think we have uh, more or less uh, and I finish what we have shared and I thank everyone and, and thank you for sharing yeah spending time with yeah. us for this hour and a half hours we hope yeah. uh some of the you know uh information that we have put together was meaningful for you and uh I think uh we wish you all the best in your job search in your career planning uh, mm -hmm. you know sometimes when you think on your own you know uh may not be able to see new perspectives so uh, always reach out to us. Don't wait for a career transition situation to happen to see us. We look forward to see you uh, through our coaching session, okay? All now, the best for your interviews, all right? Yes, and I wish you success. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Take care. Bye.